I really didn't know what I was going to say today because I called on Monday and was very surprised to be able to get a speaking slot. And um, I'm a working single mother with two children at home in two different schools, and one is in public school and has special needs. And so I have had pretty much zero time to prepare. Um, however, my nine-year-old son in third grade in Boston Spa School District brought home a math test today that gave me the material I needed. I'd like to share it. <laughs> Um, he failed the math test. He's never failed a math test before. Um, and I honestly believe a, a good part of the reason for the failure is, as someone else here, I think Monica, if she's still here, um, was saying he cannot read and process the information on the test in order to come up with a viable answer. He is currently so frustrated with math that he threw the holiest meltdown fit yesterday morning, or was it Monday morning, that there should be no school because there was, or was it Tuesday, it was Tuesday. There should be no school yesterday because it snowed on Monday. And he was adamant there was gonna be no school, absolutely no school, there cannot possibly be snow, they couldn't have cleaned the roads well, or couldn't be school, they couldn't have cleaned the roads well enough, and because he just doesn't, he doesn't want to go to school and do this anymore. Um, he, I don't even know where I was going with that. Um, he, he's just so frustrated right now, he's in a shutdown. And this is what children on the autism spectrum do. He's, he has Asperger's, he's in a regular classroom, mainstreamed with other children in the third grade. He has an aide that he shares with one other student that helps him get through the day through every transition in his day. I'm, as a result of this test, about to ask to get someone to read tests to him. He can read, not on grade level, but he does read, but he can't read and process. He can't do English and math together. That's too much. And anybody who is doing Common Core math homework with your children, they are asking you to do English and math at the same time. Look at the handwriting from my third grader. You can barely read it. Um, I was list listening to Monica and I listed some hallmarks of children on the autism spectrum, if you'll bear with me. Number one is processing delays. Number two, decreased executive function, both of which processing and executive function are required to do the things that they're asking these children to do in this common core math. Decrease problem solving skills. If my son is given a solution to a problem in advance, he can solve the problem when it occurs. However, if he doesn't also have a plan B, he cannot come up with plan B on his own. There is no plan B in that child's world. Um, he has fine and gross motor delays. He's not like his peers. His seven-year-old brother is well beyond him, physically, agility-wise. They do karate together. My nine-year-old has an orange belt because he has a great karate instructor that gives him credit for his effort, not because he's orange belt material. <laughs> um, you know, um, and a, a huge one is anxiety. Anxiety is a huge hallmark of autism spectrum disorders. My child... Yes, yes, it is, absolutely. And I too have considered putting my nine-year-old on some kind of anxiety medication so that he can... He already, since October, has been saying, I'm worried about third grade testing. I'm worried about third grade testing. And now he has a, a therapist in RDI, if you've ever heard of RDI, therapist who I talked to about this and said, I want to opt him out of testing. And she said, you should give that some deep consideration because the testing is what helps him to get and maintain the services he gets. So testing may or may, opting out may not be an option in order for him to maintain his diagnosis, his, you know, his services that he's getting. Um, another thing with children on the spectrum, impaired communication and social skills. 
he can't tell them at school what's bothering them. He's incredibly verbal, but 90% of what the child says is scripted from something he's read in a book or something he's seen on TV. It's a direct quote from somewhere that he's plugged in where he deems it appropriate. His conversational skills, try to sit at the dinner table with this child and actually ask him how his day went. It is such a challenge for him, he can't sit still and say how his day was. Conver sitting down and having a three-way conversation with my two sons at dinner is like pulling the tusks out of an elephant every night. It's, it's incredibly challenging. Um, and so he's holding it together in school. He's not having behavior issues right now because he's now nine years old, mom, <laughs> and he knows how he's supposed to behave in school, and he holds it together in school at all costs. And then he comes home and all hell breaks loose. He cannot hold it together any longer. And God forbid his little brother, who for the record goes to a private Montessori school, who meets common core standards without ever even really trying, because it's just such a different style of education. It's where both of my boys started out, but my older one cannot handle the independence and the executive function skills that are required to handle the Montessori curriculum. Um, but God forbid my seven-year-old walk up and bother my nine-year-old when he's coming home and relieving all his anxiety by lining things up and talking to things. And don't dare mess with his lineup because if you put anything out of that order, you know, the world is gonna come to an end. And this is what he needs to do every single day when he comes home. It's what helps him be able to handle going back the next day. When I said to him about this math test, which says he got 12 correct out of 23, and I said, Sam, you didn't do very well on your math test. And he said, I don't care, I hate math. He used to care. He doesn't care because this is too hard and he has no way it's too much, it's too much stuff. They're teaching him to try to figure out how much time has elapsed by using a number line. Why not give him a picture of a clock and teach him to count backwards by fives? Why do we need a number line? That's a whole different process. It doesn't make any sense and he can't compute that. That's a plan B, he doesn't have plan Bs. Um, And any behaviors that he is having when he's coming home, or even at school, any little things, you know, social things or whatever that he's doing, these are not behaviors. He's a good kid. He's a brilliant kid. What these are, are his only way of coping. These are coping mechanisms because he doesn't know what else to do. And it's not as easy as just telling him like it is with my seven-year-old. It's just not that easy. He can't come up with this stuff on his own. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is my child is not common. Common core does not apply. And I pulled him out of a very good private school and put him in public school so that he could get the services he needed. And he's come an incredibly long way from when he was six and a half, and I did this. Um, but I'm afraid we're gonna lose ground. And then I don't know what I'm gonna do. What are my other options? I can't homeschool him. I don't, honestly, I don't have the patience to teach him at home. Plus I need to work, I'm a single mom. So, you know, what are my other options for this child if Common Core scares him right out of school? What, you know, what, what do we do? He's not getting a lot of homework, but the problem is the 20 to 30 minutes of homework he is getting for him takes a lot longer. Um, and right now he's in a shutdown to the point where all he has to do is see the math page and he's rolling around on the floor screaming. I have a tutor one night a week who I've had for a while 
because my younger one doesn't really get homework unless he hasn't finished his assignments in school. Um, and so it, it, it helps instead of just shooing my younger one out of the room because my older one's a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so I have a tutor one night a week who comes in and sits and does it with him. The other nights it's on me, except Thursday nights daddy gets it. <laughs> um, and it, it really is, I'm shooing my younger one out of the room. Go find something to do, go find something to do, go find something to do. And I'm setting a timer, seriously. Sam, if you can just get through five minutes, you could have a piece of candy. <laughs> you know, if anybody watches the show Parenthood, you know, give them a piece of candy for doing the problem. <laughs> and that's literally what it takes. I'm paying him to do the homework to get it done because he's just in such a shutdown. I'm modifying, I'm writing answers for him. If you can just tell me the answer, I'll write it. Because, I mean, they are actually asking questions, and it's not on this math test, but, you know, blah, 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 this great big elongated word problem, and um, explain your answer. Not just give the answer, but explain your answer. Um, I can't even think of an example. I was going to look for one, and I didn't have time. Um, but literally, explain, you know, a word problem with, say, Tom and Sue in it, and who was wrong, Tom or Sue? Explain why. I mean, you're putting... English, you're putting writing, you're putting math, you're putting it all together, and you're asking this kid who can't come up with a plan B. I'm sitting there trying to help him, and I can't explain why. So, you know, and I'm college educated, and I cannot do a third grade math homework anymore. So, I thank you. guess that's what I have to say. Any questions? Mary, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.